MSUTV is on the air, bringing you the best student-produced educational, entertaining, and informative programming. Broadcasting out of Breckenridge Hall on the campus of Moorhead State University, MSUTV is signing on. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Don Young. And I'm Nina Cottle. This is your news for September 27, 2012. A walk in the woods turned into a night to remember for one MSU student. News Center has more on the story. In the early hours of Friday, September 14th, MSU PD received an urgent phone call. At approximately 1.15 a.m., uh, the local dispatch, 911 dispatch center here in Moorhead, received a call from a student who reported that his roommate uh, was lost in the woods near the Eagle Lake area here on campus. The lost student was Robert Vanderlaan. News Center had the chance to speak with Mr. Vanderlaan about his experience. I had just gotten out of the gym and it was right before sunset and it seemed like a nice night to take a walk. It was cool out and it wasn't that bad. So, you know, I thought I could make it around the trail in time before it got dark. Vanderlaan's walk in the woods took an unexpected turn when he realized he was lost. It really hit me whenever my phone started to die, and it was already dark then, and I lost track of the trail. Like, I didn't know if I was on, like, like a part of the creek or something, or if I was, like, on a side trail, and I didn't know exactly where I was going. With his battery power almost gone, Vanderlaan made a desperate attempt to reach help. Right before my phone died, I called my roommate and I told him I wasn't sure where I was at and then he decided to call 911. MSUPD decided to take action. Uh, we actually, as I said, activated the, the local EMS, the local rescue squad, and, and our officers began, began to search the area. Uh, we ended up and found him at approximately, let me see, 4.30, 4.35 a.m., so about three hours after the call came in. he was. Uh, a couple hundred yards off off the path there in Eagle Lake. When asked what he would do differently, Vanderlaan said, Next time I'll definitely go out more prepared, like I'll have a flashlight, I'll probably have a hiking buddy with me, and I'll have some water, snacks, a fully charged phone, so, but yeah, I think I'd go back out there. I'm kind of a daredevil. Professor Jeffrey Hill has a new series called How Hollywood Does It. Brianna Perry has more on the story. Dr. Hill talks about the making of his new show, what it's about, and how students can view it. My new series is called How Hollywood Does It, and the focus is film history and film education. How Hollywood Does It should begin airing in February on KET. Anyone that would be interested in seeing the program would probably want to look at the KET website starting January of 2013. Dr. Hill talks about how he came up with the idea for his new show and how his past shows have been successful. I came up with the idea as a result of my own love of film. Um, I have taught film history at a couple other universities uh, and colleges and I just thought it was a real appropriate topic uh, for a public media like KET. I've been real fortunate and a lot of my shows have been quite successful. I've had a number of short documentaries that have aired on KET and that have played at film festivals around the world. Uh, my latest series was Kentucky Music, which was 13 half-hour shows, which aired on KET beginning July of 2011 uh, and has been consistently rebroadcast since that time. How Hollywood Does It is kind of a Siskel and Ebert type program in that there's two hosts who discuss a particular aspect or technique of film or filmmaking. For example, one half hour show will be on lighting, one will be on cinematography, one will be on animation, one on documentary. So each particular program uh, is a specific look at a specific type of film or filmmaking technique. Um, it's been a real pleasure to work on the show with Dr. Graves from the English department and uh, Dr. Graves has, has remarked on a, a couple of different things that he didn't even know or, or understand about filmmaking. So it's been a real learning process. For News Center, I am Brianna Perry. For more information, contact Professor Hill or Dr. Graves. The governor's Scholars program has returned to MSU's return to MSU. News Center's Adam Black has more on the story. 
After three years, the Governor's Scholars Program is returning to MSU. Melissa Patrick from Regional Engagement says that this is good for the university. We hosted uh, the Governor's Scholars Program from 2004 until 2009 and that was the last uh, year that it was here. We lost the bid, it, it's rebid every three years and we lost the bid, uh, we were not competitive that time and it went to Murray State at that time and we just put together a competitive bid and we will be ha hosting it again in 2013 for three years. Patrick says there are many benefits for MSU. We did have a rise in the Governor Scholars participants that came to Moorhead State and that helps with our retention rates because these are serious scholars and they are coming to get an education and often this also benefits us and benefits our region because once they come and connect with this area they stay in this area and become the civic leaders. Patrick says high school students will get to see what academic and residential life is like in college. Students attending GSP will often, they're experiencing dorm life for the first time. They will have the usual experiences that university students have. When they get up, they do have their meals together. Uh, they will have them down here at ADUC at, at MSU. And Aramark is uh, planning special menus and things like that for them. And then they will go to whether they're having their focus group class, their general studies class, a field trip, a community service project. Uh, most of the uh, general studies will also include a, a service learning component where they will go out and experience and develop a project or work in the community and then come back and reflect on what they've learned and apply that. Reporting for News Center, Adam Black. The Governor Scholars Program will begin in the summer of 2013 and last for five weeks. Patrick says it will be a life-changing program. We'll be right back after the break for a quick look at weather with Haley Murphy and New Center Notices featuring Channing Nip from the Pi Kappa Phi fraternity. Hungry and only have a short break? Come to ADUC. Come enjoy favorite restaurants such as Chick fil A, Taco Bell, Pio, Croutons, and Asian Express. Get in and get out fast. Quick and yummy. I'm so freaking bored. I cannot handle another hour of the Kardashians. I wish we'd go bowling. Me too. Oh, great. Your wish has come true. Wilson Lanes, located inside a Laughlin Health Building on campus, has six lanes of pure bowling fun, and now with automated scoring. Two dollars per game and a dollar shoe rental. How could you pass this up? To New Center, I'm Haley Murphy. We'll take a quick look at your weather. As you can see, currently in Moorhead, temperatures around 73 degrees. Overcast day, definitely some clouds going through, and as we can see, some rain has moved into um, our area. We'll be seeing more and more showers overnight. Take a look at your record temperatures. As you can see, a high of 91 degrees in 1939, which also held the high for last week. And in 1942, a record low of 37 degrees. So definitely nowhere near that, although we've been seeing some cooler temperatures in the morning, uh, definitely some frost on, some, on the cars, and you know, warming up as the day goes on. Take a look at your radar across the state. As you can see, not too much going on. Some mild showers across the state. Uh, definitely some might be moving our way from like the Lexington area overnight. We'll see more showers in over the, um, throughout the week and into the weekend. But no storms, nothing like that, so just be prepared. Take your temperatures across the state, as you can see, around 78 degrees in Bowling Green, 74 um, near Louisville, 72 near Frankfurt, and a low of 68 degrees near Covington. Towards this side of the state, as you can see, 75 near London, 74 in Jackson, and a little bit cooler at 71 in Ashland. So temperatures across the state, as you can see, mid-70s, nothing too bad. Definitely an overcast day with some showers moving in uh, across the evening. We'll see more and more of that. and 
Temperature is a little bit stable throughout the weekend. We'll take a more in-depth look at weather after, after New Center notices. Welcome to New Center Notices. With us today, we have Channing Nip from the Pi Kappa Phi fraternity. Hey, Channing, how are you doing Thanks today? Thanks for having me, Nina. It's a pleasure. So, what do you have a position with the Pi Kappa Phi fraternity? I'm actually the Archon, which uh, same thing as the president okay. of Pi Kappa Phi. Okay. With that, like, what do you take care of? What do you? What does that job detail? My job is uh, overseeing uh, meetings. My job is to make sure everybody uh, in the fraternity, the other officers, as well as the committee chairs are doing their job, uh, making sure that we are following uh, all the guidelines uh, as far as MSU goes and as far as uh, Pi Kappa Phi nationally. Okay. Um, am I correct that your philanthropy week was last week? Yes. Okay. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that and how it went? And okay. Yes, uh, the week that we actually had last week, uh, we do a week of philanthropy in uh, the fall and the spring. Mm -hmm. So the week that we had last week was actually called No Boundaries Week. Uh, it's a week where we go out and we raise as much money as we can for our uh, national, actually it's an organization that Pi Kappa Phi owns nationally called Push America, and that goes to raising money for people with disabilities. So uh, what we did last week, uh, we did a different event each day. We had a date auction. Uh, the next day we had an event which was uh, not as much as raising money as it was raising awareness uh, for people with disabilities. So we took uh, members of the Special Olympics to a laser lot show in the Space Science Center here at MSU. And then uh, Wednesday we actually had our Miss Push pageant is where each organization gets the chance to actually enter a, uh, a female into this uh, pageant and then they have a talent portion interview, evening gown, all that. And then uh, we have judges who, uh, a woman who actually works for Special Olympics, who I think is your aunt, actually. <laughs> okay. And um, then we also have other volunteers who come in and judge for that. And then we crown that at the end of the night. And uh, we weren't actually able to do the prom last week, but we're doing that tomorrow. So. You, okay, so for people who don't know, what is uh, the prom. Okay, is the prom uh, is actually something that was presented to us two years ago um, by Pathways, and uh, who is also, um, well, the woman who is over it, actually, she is also over Horizon Village, which is uh, a place that we go and visit every Thursday. Uh, people with disabilities actually mm -hmm. live there. And so um, they actually presented this to us and said, this is what we would like to do this year. Uh, a prom for all the residents, not just at Horizon Village, but uh, surrounding counties and everything like that. And so uh, we said we immediately jumped right on it and said yes. We're you know we would be more than happy to help with this. So uh, 2010 was the first year we did it, uh, and Gamma Phi Beta helped us with it. And it, uh, more or less, what it is is uh, a prom for uh, all the residents of Pathways in the surrounding counties, and uh, it's to show them a good time. Uh, maybe some of them didn't get to have a prom or, you know, they may not get to go out and have actual formal events like that, so. So do they, they have a lot of fun with that then? They really enjoy oh, yes. it? It's, uh, it's one of the best parts is to see the smiles on their faces every night as you're walking them in, uh, going up to the photographer to take their picture, or just out on the dance floor with them. So then it's definitely worth it. Oh, yeah. Get something out of it too, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll be right back with an extended look at weather and it, with Adrena Anderson and Eagle Athletics. For students pursuing a career in the medical health field, come check out the new MSU SHARE building. The SHARE building is located right below St. Clair Hospital on Fleming Avenue. This building will offer students the chance to further their understanding of medical health and prepare them for a future with state-of-the-art hands-on classes. Need a ride? Next time, call the MSU van, 783-8747. We're happy to help.
at the Moorhead State University Recreation and Wellness Center, have the time of your life getting in shape. Free of charge to all students. Welcome back to News Center. We'll take another look at your weather. As you can see, currently in Moorhead, around 73 degrees and definitely an overcast day. As you can see, some clouds have moved in throughout the day and bringing some rain with them. Humidity is rather high, around 73%, and winds kind of light around 8 miles per hour, so it's turned to become a muggy, a little bit warmer day than we're used to over the past couple of days, but we'll see some more weather like that throughout the week. Turn to your temperatures across the state, as you can see, down near London, around 75, 74 near Jackson, 71 near Ashland, 72 in Lexington. Towards the western part of the state, down in Bowling Green, around 78 degrees, 74 near Louisville, 72 near Frankfurt, and cooling down just a little bit more at 68 in Covington. So overall, temperatures in the low 70s across the state, and we'll definitely see some more temperatures like that throughout the weekend, cooling off just a little bit. Take a look at your radar across the state, courtesy of WKYT. As you can see, not too much happening, a few scattered showers throughout. No real thunderstorms or anything like that to be worried about, but definitely remember to take an umbrella with you throughout the rest of the evening and throughout most of the weekend as well. Some storms near Lexington, as you can see, some showers definitely will move our way throughout tonight and pick up throughout the weekend and into next week. Take a look at your national radar. As you can see, just some more storms towards the west, or some showers towards the west moving uh, with a front, a cold front towards us. Um, not too much happening right now, but we'll definitely see some more from that next week. Your cloud coverage across the uh, United States, as you can see, definitely some, uh, some clouds and some um, coverage moving from that middle part of the United States towards us. We'll see the effects of that this weekend with more overcast days to come. Take a look at your temperatures across the state, as you, or across the United States, as you can see. Uh, higher temperatures uh, south of us in the 80s, a lower when you move up towards us around the high, high 60s and low 70s. Take a look at the western part of the United States. You can see mid 70s across, not too bad. Temperatures pretty typical for this time of year, definitely bringing some showers and some cold fronts with them throughout the weekend. Tonight you can expect to see a few showers moving in, definitely, and a low of 64 degrees. Uh, it'll start your day tomorrow off not too bad, but it'll definitely have some overcast again and some showers. As you can see, partly cloudy with a high of 70. We'll see much more temperatures like that this weekend as well, so be prepared. Definitely some showers are going to move throughout the um, state tomorrow and throughout our area, so be prepared for that. Take a look at your five-day forecast. As you can see, Friday you can expect a high of 70 degrees and a low of 68 with some rain showers definitely moving throughout the bluegrass. Saturday you can expect a high of 69 and a low of 45. Some overcast weather is likely. The day will start off pretty sunny, but some clouds will definitely move in. Sunday, a high of 67 and a low of 42. Another partly cloudy, um, somewhat sunny day. Some clouds moving in throughout the afternoon as well. Monday, a high of 70 and a low of 40 degrees, so cooling off as the day goes on. And Tuesday, you can expect to see some showers with a high of 72 and a low of 45. So guys, thanks. Some overcast days definitely coming up. So. Well, at least it won't be too cold. <laughs> nope, staying pretty warm. And now we'll go to um, sports with Nina and Gina Anderson. <laughs> Your home for the Moorhead State Eagles, this is New Center Sports. Moorhead State's Volleyball Eagles are on a roll, picking up their ninth straight win of the season last night against rival Eastern Kentucky University. The match was also the third straight win of the East, over Eastern Kentucky and put the Eagles at 11-6 overall with a 3-0 record in the OVC play. Helping them with the win, junior Leslie Shellhaus piled up 27 digs while senior attacker Ellie Roberson had a team high of 14 kills. Middle blocker Laura McDermott also put forth a 10 kill and 5 block effort while sophomore setter Colby Cameron had a team best of 21 assists, 6 digs and 4 kills. The Volleyball Eagles return to action on Saturday when they host, host Maury State. Game time is set for 2 p.m. After falling 2-1 and one in their OVC opener Sunday against rival Eastern Kentucky University, Moorhead State Soccer Eagles are looking to avenge their loss. The soccer team will be back in action Sunday when they travel to OVC newcomer Belmont. The game is scheduled for a 3 p.m. kickoff. The Eagles currently sit at 8-1 overall. This weekend, Moorhead State's cross-country team travels to Louisville to be part of the 49-team Greater Louisville Classic. The meet will be the largest of the season and takes place at E.P. Tom Sawyer Park. The Eagles men will compete at 10.45 a.m. 
while the MSU women's will compete at 11.30 a.m. With Moorhead State's history of performing well at the Tom Sawyer Park, the, ten, the teams are hoping to keep that tradition alive. The men's team comes off a meet at Memphis and Vanderbilt in which they defeated multiple regionally ranked teams. Regarding the strong showings thus far, Coach Brett Erickson says the team just needs to keep their momentum going. The women's runners are also obtained multiple season best at the Tom Sawyer Park. Last year, Coach Erickson is looking for an all the runners to step up and be more aggressive. The Moorhead State men's golf team recently finished 13th in the Louisville Cardinal Intercollegiate at the Cardinal Club Golf House. The Eagles had a first round score of 312, a second round score of 293, and a third round score of 306 to achieve a final of 911. Coach Rex Cheney felt the first and third rounds needed to be better, while the second round was decent and he spoke to the team's potential. Senior Jared Flannery led Moorhead State with a 220 and tied for 24th out of 84 golfers. The Golfer Eagles continue to play next Tuesday and Monday at Murray State Invitational. And now for New Center's famous sports trivia. Which current Moorhead State volleyball player holds the school record in block assists? Is the answer A, Caitlin Clark, B, Annie Gerwin Salinger, C, Laura McDermott, or D, Ellie Roberson? So what do you guys think the answer might be? I'm going to have a D, Ellie Roberson. <laughs> I can't say her last name, uh, Annie. Thing. <laughs> okay. I think she's right. I think it is Annie. Well, the answer is actually Annie. She, um, she set out most of her junior year, and she was still ranked 10th overall in conference for blocks. She um, is a big impact player for this team. Her strong area is her block, her ability to block, and her ability to help with the block assist. She's been making, um, making way this season, and from what I hear, she, she's going to be a player to look after. All right, we'll be back after the break. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. The mind is everything. What we think, we become. I'm Tony Hobbs, host of MSPR's new show, Good Vibes. Each week, I'll be sifting through hours of material to bring you the best in adult alternative music. You can expect to hear from bands such as Coldplay, Mumford & Sons, The Kicks, and much more. Good Vibes, Mondays from 7 to 10 p.m. on Moorhead State Public Radio. Seven. Who are you? Need a ride? Need a ride? Next time, call the MSU van. 783-8747. We're happy to help. For students living both on and off campus, come check out the new POD Store, located in Alumni Tower. POD Store is a great way for students on campus to go grocery shopping without leaving campus, or for students looking for a place to spend flex dollars on drinks, snacks, and supplies. Remember, if you're by Alumni Tower, visit the POD Store to the right of the catwalk for products on demand when you want them. There's a new satellite orbiting Earth, and it was put there through the efforts of MSU Space Science Centers. Chris Nolan Ingham has more. The fingerprints of a select few MSU students and faculty are now orbiting the Earth. New Center caught up with Professor Kevin Brown to talk about the latest project of the Space Science Center. I led the project on the engineering side and uh, developed the, we developed each one of the subsystems um, with a group of students of approximately 10 to 15 students. Uh, over about a 12-month period. Uh, we did everything from power systems to payload to RF antennas, radios, uh, structure. Um, all of the components were built here by us and designed here. 
Professor Brown explains what CXBN, the Cosmic X-ray Background Nanosatellite, is doing as it orbits the Earth. CXBN, the Cosmic X-ray ba Background Nanosatellite, is uh, measuring uh, the background of the cosmic X-rays. Uh, so what the X-ray background is, is this reference point at which to relate all other measurements to. New Center also sat down with the director of the Space Science Center, Dr. Ben Malfris, to further discuss CXBN and what it is all about. CXBN is the Cosmic Microwave Background Nanosatellite, and this is a model. This is a one-to-one -one scale model. We call it an engineering model. Uh, but it was designed and built by students and faculty here at the Space Science Center at Moorhead State University. And it was launched on September 13th out of Vandenberg Air Force Base. And we're tracking it now. It's on Earth orbit right now, orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes. Dr. Malfris goes on to discuss the mechanics and the ultimate goals of CXBN. The science goal of the satellite is to um, detect and make a more precise measurement of the diffuse X-ray background for the Big Bang. Uh, the satellite's going to go into orbit and it will rotate about one-sixth of a hertz and it has an X-ray detector here, a uh, cadmium zinc telluride X-ray detector. And as the satellite rotates around, it'll make a, make a map of the X-ray sky and it will, will uh, in, intentionally map the X-ray background from the Big Bang. The Big Bang occurred 13.8 billion years ago and there's leftover relic radiation, mostly in the microwave part of the spectrum, but there's a little bit left in the X-ray part of the spectrum and nobody understands the underlying physics behind the um, production mechanism for the X-ray background. And so this little satellite hopefully will resolve one of the remaining mysteries in modern cosmology. Reporting for News Center, I'm Chris Nolan Ingham. For information on how to become a space science major, contact Dr. Ben Malferis at 606-783-2212. The Kentucky Center for Traditional Music unveiled their new building on Thursday, September 20th. New Center's Hardy Breeding has more on the story. On a beautiful September afternoon, Moorhead State and the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music celebrated as the university made history once again. The newly renovated KCTM, which cost more than $3 million, opened its doors officially and the traditional music program became a major, making it the first of its kind at any university. The concert, put on by KCTM students and instructors, and ribbon cutting was attended by MSU students and faculty, as well as the community of music lovers. Speakers for the event included the program's director, Raymond McLean, and President Andrews. New Center caught up with McLean as he shared his thoughts on the building and the support the program has received. This this building has been, as you know, quite a quite an exciting uh, project for a long time. We have wonderful classrooms, offices, uh, rehearsal space, practice rooms, uh, very good space for the archives, a beautiful recording studio. The university's support for the center all across the campus is overwhelming and we're particularly pleased that Dr. Andrews, our university's president, is interested in this, uh, in this center uh, as he is with you know so many programs across the, across the campus. Of course being a banjo player and a singer himself he's uh, you know has a personal connection as well which is very nice. Well, we're the second uh, institution to offer a Bachelor of Arts degree in specifically in in this kind of music. But we're the first to offer this degree in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the first with the approval of the National Association of Schools of Music. We take students out to perform extensively, um, getting ready to take a group to New York and in, in uh, just in a few weeks. Uh, and we've taken students to Ireland and to the People's Republic of China, and then we've taken them also just across the street to the Moonlight Stage and to, uh, and to you know, every, everywhere in between. McLean says while the KCTM is about music, the main focus is on an education. We have some wonderful, dedicated uh, students. Some of them came with a lot of experience already and then some walk in and they say I'd like to learn to play the banjo. And all those students are important. What's more important is uh, your level of interest, your diligence, 
And I frequently say to students, and it's true, the, th the same things that make you successful as a, as a student will make you successful later in life, in a, in a career or in your personal life. Reporting for News Center, this is Hardy Breeding. On behalf of Haley Murphy with Weather, Adrena Anderson with Sports, and the rest of the News Center team, I'm Don Young. And I'm Nina Cottle. Have a great evening.